Hello, my name is David Busacker. Um, I live with my wife, Bridget, in Minnesota, and we have two daughters. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about the relationship between mystery and romance in our marriage. Um, and I'll start, and of course, I'm, I'm focusing mostly on, on sex and intimacy in this, in this video. There's a lot of dimensions to our marriage, um, but the insight that I wanna talk about here um, really starts with how we started thinking about sex when we, even when we were dating. Um, I think we both agree now we were really drawn to the mystery of sex um, and how mysterious and, 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 and huge um, the act is. And um, I, I, I am sure that, you know, there are many people who say like, hey, you know, sex isn't a big part of your marriage. You know, you, it's, you know, it's just, uh, you know, there's a lot of dimensions to it. You're not just having sex all day. And of course, if anybody, there's anybody engaged out there, like, I, I want to assure you that is true. You know, there's a lot, a lot more to marriage, but sex also is very deeply intertwined with marriage in a very, um, in a lot in a physical and spiritual ways. Um, and, and I think that again, like that idea, like really captivated me and Bridget, um, around the, the beauty and the awe and the hugeness of sex. Um, and, and again, how just how mysterious it was, um, and, um, and how mysterious Bridget therefore was to me. And so when we started taking NFP courses, um, as we prepared to get married, um, that was one of the things that really, uh, really took me by the horns. I'm an engineer. I like understanding things. Um, but, but wow, I mean, you learn a lot, uh, as a guy about a woman's body, um, that you had no idea about before you took NFP courses, um, that sex ed in middle school just didn't, didn't, didn't cut for you. Um, and so, you know, I, I began to, we began to communicate a lot more than we had about sex, um, during those, those sort of last years of our engagement. Um, and we started communicating with each other a lot and, and something that happens. And of course, and actually this leads into our marriage as well. I mean, I was, I was definitely by no means not excited by the time we got to our marriage. Um, you know, sex was very mysterious for a long time. We began learning a lot about each other and, and really enjoying that newness and that freshness and that sort of, um, thrill that, that accompanies sex. Um, and, and as we continue to, to get better at it and continue to do it and do NFP, um, the mystery started to give way to familiarity. And, um, and, and, and you know, like there, there's something really inherent to mystery about not knowing things, about not having all the information. Like imagine reading a mystery novel and knowing what the end's gonna be. Maybe you've read it intimately many times, you know every page. Um, it's not going to be a mystery, at least to you anymore, um, because you're going to be very familiar with it. And that doesn't mean you don't love the book. In fact, I can't imagine having read a book many times without loving it. Um, but it does mean that the element of mystery starts to recede and the element, element of familiarity starts to take hold. And I think that happened both for sex and NFP for us, that as we got better at NFP, as we got better at sex, as we um, learned each other uh, in this area, um, the mystery started to recede. And I think that wasn't something we were really prepared for. Um, I don't think we were really prepared on how to figure out what was next for us in terms of the building of intimacy when it wasn't rooted on mystery and this, um, this crazy adventure called sexuality that we are now experiencing as a married couple. And so, um, that, that's, that was, you know, that's, that's sort of the, the point that, um, we decided that we needed to introduce, um, more different kinds of romance to our marriage. And I'm by no means an expert in the areas of, um, of the definitions, the philosophical definitions of romance. But uh, I think that romance um, involves like the, uh, the situational, like acting in a situational way to build the relationship, whatever building means in that minute. Like when you're dating or just courting, it's very possible that um, building means um, you know, uh, just building tension, um, just building m intrigue, building, um, fun, building memories. Um, and when you're six years into marriage with two daughters, building means something different. It means building trust. It means building, uh, intimacy. It means building, um, uh, reliability and, uh, and all, and different kinds of virtues. And so, it, what it, what we realized was that romance had to pivot for us. The way we were approaching romance had to pivot. It wasn't about just doing something new and mysterious whenever we were in the bedroom. I, I don't think that that would lead to a very um, intimate or even potentially dignified 
sexual relationship. Although I'm by no means not advocating for communication about what you'd like to try. Um, but I, I do think that we had to, we had to appreciate the fact that our romance was, was going to, was going to look differently as we continued to grow together into a mature, uh, couple into the couple that we wanted to be. Um, and so that, I mean, that's really where we are right now. I, I don't claim to have been all the way through this path. We're only six years in, uh, I know we'll be married many longer, uh, God willing, but, um, you know, that's, that's the journey we've started. That's the, um, that's the, the, the areas we're working on together is to build, um, to build intimacy, reliability, communication into our intimacy. Um, and, and I, I think like, so, so the, the way I'll close, uh, so I guess to be a little practical and I, I can't go into too many details cause I think it's a little private and I think it's also very dependent on your situation, but, um, we prepare for sex now. Um, we, we make sure to create an ambiance that, um, is dignified and calm and, and, and intimate. And, um, what am I trying to say private for us, which can sometimes be a challenge with, with kids. Um, we are very communicative. Um, we're open to each other, open to being influenced. We're open to trying new things as well. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of tactics that we're just, we're experiencing right now. But I think the big thing is making space for romance to change over the time from, from mystery to familiarity. Um, and um, the last thing I'll end with is I don't think mystery is a bad thing. I, I, th I hope I've been clear about that. It was just a period for us that is evolving. Um, but there are also ways to add mystery even uh, even in a mature relationship. Um, like we uh, we now have like um, this adventure bo uh, adventure book that will tell us uh, dates um, to go on and uh, and sort of like create like a, a little bit of a mystery for us to to solve. Um, or at least like a surprise for us to engage in on a date night, which is really fun. Um, and we just also sometimes surprise each other with like with presents or with sex or whatever it is. But, um, but I think they're the exceptions to the rule, um, especially when you live a busy life, which everyone does with children, um, or at least a full life, I should say, um, is that there isn't always, um, you know, the time to make surprises every time you want to be intimate. Um, and so we're really focused on building that new normal for us around, um, uh, intimacy, reliability, trust, and communication and familiarity, uh, where mystery and intrigue were once. Um, so that's, uh, that's my message in our story. And I, I hope you're all, uh, blessed by it in some way.